Hey everyone, it's time for a video. Uh, what are we going to talk about today? Well, I'll tell you. So I've had, uh, like most people, I have a bunch of uh, tools. Well, I say most people, but most people like me, I have a bunch of tools. And of course you have to store them. So some time ago I made this uh, thing and I'll slide it in. I'll have to focus uh, while I bring it in here. Uh, it is uh, some screwdriver storage. And let me try to focus. Try to focus a bit. Um, it's some screwdriver storage. Uh, I got the idea some time ago. It's basically just you do cross pieces of wood and then you uh, you know you drop your screwdrivers in there and they're held in place and all that also you did it with uh, you know storing crescent wrenches and things um it's okay uh, it certainly helped keep a bunch of stuff together but as you can tell things are all kind of just clumped together and you know like this short one I mean it'll just fall over well, I actually didn't see that so like that and then, oh, oh god they're all over the place I have since decided that this thing needs to be replaced. Um, I could go and spend a bunch of money and buy something, but honestly, where's the fun in that? And I may not get what I really want. Um, so I've decided to build something. Uh, I have a limited amount of space that I can use. Uh, space roughly is uh, 12 inches by 10 inches, uh, as you can see here. Um, it's kind of a piece of paper or cardstock that I've used to try to lay out and get a rough idea of what it is. So I've got, uh, as you saw, the screwdrivers and then I have things like crescent wrenches, um, scissors, you know, and then of course I have a whole bunch of pliers and whatnot. Um, so the idea is, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it in one part and there's another piece of cardstock I've cut out. One part is going to be um, screwdrivers, and this is me just experimenting. So kind of what I've done, uh, I actually went and uh, measured every screwdriver I had, along with uh, some scissors and crescent wrenches and all that. Uh, and the space I have to work in, as I said before, is 10 inches by 12 inches. And there's like a shelf I put it on. I won't show you. It's not important. Um, but <clears throat> the idea is I've got... 29 screwdrivers, three cursor wrenches, and three uh, pairs of scissors. So what I did was is I've kind of measured and by doing something like this, uh, I said, well, first I tried like one inch spacing on the holes uh, and I found that that wouldn't work. And then I went and did one and quarter. So if I take these two, which are these kind of like the biggest handles and put them, they'll fit and there'll be a little bit of a gap between them. So of course, if I take smaller ones, like say these two, uh, there won't be anything in there. So anyway, that's the basic idea. Um, I'm going to show you bits and pieces as I go along building this and then the final product. Uh, I won't, I'll talk about the pliers uh, storage later on. It's uh, going to be hopefully a section that will fit over here and will have levels. It's hard to explain, easy to see when you see it. Anyway, I'm going to go and do some cutting. Uh, what I'm going to do is use this as the top. So basically, uh, if you think about it, this will be the top and there will be holes. This is kind of like coming in from the side. And I'll have like screwdrivers going through and uh, there will be pieces of wood. And it's going to be kind of like a box setting up. Um, this is a piece of 5 8 inch melamine particle board core. Uh, some scrap. It works out pretty well in terms of size. I think it's a, just a smidge under 8 inches wide, but that's okay. Uh, it's a little long, so I'm going to have to cut it, uh, cut this extra piece off. And uh, what I'll do is I'm going to actually go and drill um, five uh, columns of seven rows with a quarter inch, one and a quarter inch between them. I'm going to offset them a bit. In this case, I'm going to start out offset three quarter inch from the right side. Uh, actually, you guys can't see that too well. Um, I'm going to start off three quarter inch. Let me focus too. Sorry, I'm just rambling away without making sure you can see things. Um, I'm going to start off three and a quarter inch from the right and then one inch up, uh, partly to, you know, give some space. And then they, uh, so I don't, there's going to be wood underneath. So I don't want to drill into that. And then, of course, the other reason is, is I want to have, uh, 
I don't want to completely lose a lot of space. Like if I'm doing it here, it'll work out pretty well. So that's the idea. Uh, as I go along, I'll uh, show bits and pieces. Like the next thing I'll show you is probably this and maybe some drill out. One thing I did think about doing, um, I had a couple ideas and I probably one of them I'll show you later, is I'm thinking about uh, maybe drilling an inset. In other words, if I got, say, a screwdriver and sitting and I've measured and pretty much what I call the handle inset, which is this diameter here, um, is uh, for pretty much all of them is one inch or less. There's a couple that it isn't. They're bigger. Um, but most of them are one inch or less. So I might drill holes that are slightly larger than one inch and put like maybe, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch deep. Something that I can drop them in and they'll kind of be held in place. Um, I won't do that on this board, uh, but I may grab a piece of scrap and try it out and just see how it works. Um, the other thing I'm going to try, uh, I have, of course, this is the blade of the screwdriver and it's got a certain um, uh, diameter or thickness, if you will. Uh, diameter is the right word, but thickness is also understand, easy to understand. And uh, none of them are any bigger than, say, I think 3 8 inches. So I've got to determine whether or not I want to go and drill different size holes. But anyway, so that's where I'm at. I'll be back shortly once I uh, do some things. I might show you a layout or something. I'm not sure. But I'll take you along for the ride and show you stops as I go along. I'll be back shortly. All right, I'm back. Um, I have uh, found a scrap board. Uh, it's not really the same size, but, you know, it's good enough. It's three-quarter inch, etc. Uh, as you can tell, it's been used a lot. Um, anyway, I marked out a grid, uh, three quarter inch, one inch, which is what I said I was going to do before. Um, moved over my dimensions that I discussed when I was planning this out. Um, and I'm going to go and experiment a bit with hole sizes as well as doing, uh, drilling some of these with a counter bore, like an inset, and then some without and just see how that goes. So I'll be back shortly with the results of that. All right, it's time to do some drilling. I'm going to drill a few holes. And I'm doing the uh, insets first so and then after that I'll follow in with the actual holes uh, and I'm probably gonna do maybe half of these or two rows and maybe do maybe deeper as I go in so I'll have to reset and set these in deeper back in a moment all right time for the next set off to the next bunch this will be the last bunch I do so this is uh, this will be this is like one eighth kind of one quarter and this will be kind of three eighths And that's it. Now I'll start drilling the regular holes. So one thing uh, before I drill these other holes, um, these are the through holes for the uh, blades of the screwdrivers. The uh, Forstner bit has a nice uh, point on it. I don't know if you can see it too well there. Um, and that point allows, uh, you know, it's, it's part of how a Forstner works is, is it cuts out and, and drills and then it shaves out. It also sets up, when it does it, it makes a nice uh, guide point for a regular, in this case, a brow point bit. Just something uh, to note. Now 
Now, this fence is set back a little too far. You need to line it up and make sure it's locked in. There. the fence. And these don't have to be perfect. They just have to be in there, mostly. I'm going to do the rest and I'll be back shortly. All right, I'm back. I've uh, drilled, uh, as you can tell, I guess it would be 25 holes, uh, test holes. These are all 3 8 inch diameter through. These are the one inch uh, inset counter bores. <clears throat> um, this is 1 8, 1 quarter, about 3 8 inch deep, roughly. Um, so there's some. I've, you know, part of the reason why you do this is uh, just to see if some of the things you think about as you're working on this uh, are correct. Uh, you can think of it as prototyping, testing out. Um, prototyping is probably the best way to think about it. Uh, working out the kinks of an idea or design or something that you have. So in this case, uh, I'm pretty happy with uh, how this is. This part is done. I don't know that I need the insets because, like, if I do them, say, in these three, they're still fine now. Uh, this is kind of wobbly, um, but the insets themselves, uh, they're pretty good. They work out pretty well. Um, I don't know that the depth really makes much of a difference. Uh, one thing I can say is, is that um, part of the problem with uh, doing this work is that some of the... Um, you know, the blade diameter, as I said before, they're all different. Uh, there's standardization, of course, between, like, say, these, which are all the same. And, in fact, they're a lot, uh, pretty decent size, uh, pretty significant amount smaller than the diameter of the hole I've drilled, which is 3 8 inch. So they kind of slide around and wobble around. Uh, there's nothing there to really grip them tight. Um, meanwhile, if I take, say, uh, a larger one, let's see if I can find one that's going to be bigger. The problem is, of course, it won't. Uh, it'll, I'm actually hitting the bottom of the box, not this. Uh, but I'll hold it up. It works out a lot better. The inset doesn't work though because uh, this uh, is um, an inch in diameter, so it's not fitting. It actually would need to be bigger. And I don't really have a Forstner bit that's going to work for that. So I was kind of considering skipping doing the insets. Uh, this works out pretty well though uh, for this size. So what I may end up having to do is. Um, and there's another problem I'll cover in a second about the diameter of these holes is that I may end up doing a progressive size. In other words, this is 3 8 so I may end up actually doing like the first row is 5 16 and then the next, I'm uh, on my plan when I've got seven rows, the next ones would be say 3 8 so these would fit fine uh, and actually wouldn't wobble around much at all. 
Uh, and then the last ones are going to have to be bigger than 3 8 because, for example, this large driver, uh, yeah, it's not going to fit in. This actually needs like a 7 16 so that's part of the problem right there. And then I've got like this, which clearly won't work either for a, a, a 3 8 inch hole. It needs to be 7 16 And then um, I think I've got another, yeah, that actually does work, that positive drive. And then I've got the slotteds, which are the problem themselves. So like a small, like this stubby slotted, it's too big. It's uh, actually a little bit 3 8 hammer, but I knew that when I drilled it. Uh, but I was curious to see how much of a problem this is. So this is another one that's going to have to be bigger. But um, I've got this smaller slotted that, sure, 3 8 is great. In fact, it just kind of flops all over the place, which is kind of a problem. So I've tried to avoid... In my design, I've tried to avoid doing specific holes um, simply because you just end up with a problem where uh, you have maybe you want to get more drivers, maybe you need to get more screwdrivers, and uh, if you're fitting these things to it, you end up with a problem where you have a spot for a, uh, a driver. You don't have a spot for a driver because it's a certain particular size. Like, Let's say I'd done this and then I turned around and got this stubby. Well, uh, that's kind of a problem because it won't fit. So I've got to, I'm going to try to come up with some kind of compromise which will work for it. Um, but again, even this long one, it's going to be the same kind of problem. Um, what I may do is uh, I may have a row just for big slotted, like this slotted, which is the largest one I have in terms of blade size. Uh, it's actually. Uh, let's see, yeah, it's almost, it's close to a half inch in uh, uh, width in terms of how wide it is, so I'd have to have a half inch hole for this thing to even fit. So what I may do is kind of compromise even with that and have like uh, one column of holes which are just for these wide drivers like this one too. Uh, and I mean, I kind of don't want to do that, but I kind of don't have a choice in some ways unless, uh, I don't know, I'm going to think about it some more before I say that, make that statement for certain that I don't have a choice, but trying to eliminate the, the special choices that you have to make, which kind of makes it hard in some ways to move things around. So I'm going to keep on trucking on this, and uh, I'll be back and show you some of the things I've decided and where I'm at. So, um, back in a bit. All right, I'm back. Um, <clears throat> I have uh, uh, done some experimenting. I did one other thing that uh, I don't think I mentioned before. I took some foam and I put it, uh, used some contact adhesive and sprayed it on and then layered it up. I did two layers. Uh, uh, this is like some cheap craft foam. You can buy it like, you know, a variety of places, craft stores, what have you, Amazon, other places. Um, it's pretty thin, but I experimented a bit. I did some, uh, what I did is I sprayed it in. I went and I dropped to make sure I centered. What I did was I dropped like a, a X-Acto knife and I cut a couple of crosses. And then for some of the others, I drilled holes a little smaller. What I've, uh, I, I do like how this works. It actually ends up doing pretty well in terms of uh, holding these in pretty good. Uh, it just provides it some additional stability. I mean, they're still going to move around a bit, uh, but not a lot. Um, I, and I think that's a, bit, a plus, uh, basically, in how that works. Um, it helps with stability some. I mean, in some cases, you can flip it over and they're not even going to come out. So it's, it's pretty nice in that regard. And it's pretty cheap and easy to do. Uh, I think I'm going to do just one layer. I did two and it gets a little too uh, stiff. Um, it kind of grips it a little too too hard. So when you're pulling out, kind of you feel kind of too much pull. It's a little too much effort in some cases. Um, but uh, I think I'm going to do that. Uh, one other thing I've decided, I don't think I am going to do the insets. Um, you know, I was talking earlier about not trying to do specific sizes. So uh, I was having some issues with trying to figure this out. So I went and grabbed, uh, created a spreadsheet, laid out uh, five columns, seven rows, um, and then laid out kind of roughly blade diameters along with what hole you would need. Uh, basically given a 16th inch clearance for some of these to, to hold it in place and 
I've come up with these are the holes I'm going to drill, and this is where things are going to go. So, messed around with a couple of things. Um, pretty happy overall, I think, with how this layout's going to work. Uh, and remember, though, I've still got to do um, the slots on the side. So, for the crescent wrenches and the scissors, um, and I'll do that once I'm done with this part. And then uh, um, I'm going to probably, actually, I'll probably experiment with that on this to make sure it works out fine in terms of layout and um, how I should uh, angle the slots so that they end up being in the right spot. But uh, as I move forward, I'll show you some more. Hey everyone, back. Um, it's actually been some time, like in the, uh, when I say some time, I mean like many days since I've uh, been able to get back to this. Um, so where I left off was, of course, to drill some holes. Uh, I'm not gonna do the insets. The other thing I've got to do, of course, is I've got to do the slots for uh, the scissors and the uh, crescent wrenches. Um, I'm going to do this at an angle. This is, again, just test board, so um, you can give you an idea, though. Uh, you, know, you could try to drill it out and maybe use some files and stuff, um, but what I find in this case is probably going to work for this something this small is to actually use a router and a router bit. Um, in this case, straight bit, what I'm going to do is make um, <clears throat> a template. Um, I'm going to put this on the bench, clamp it down on the edge, and then uh, put this piece, and this will actually be the template, and then clamp a board, and then run the router where I want with the right size router bit for the certain length. I'll probably drill holes at the start just to give myself a good uh, reference point. Um, I've also already measured... Uh, what I think is going to work. Um, and uh, yeah, so the way it works with the template is just to give you a quick overview is you actually make, um, you can do it one of two ways. You can have an offset bit, which I won't get into, or you can have a straight uh, pattern bit, which is what I'm going to use. And you make a slot in whatever dimension you want. And then you usually use it in, say, you know, thin material like this is about a quarter inch thick. And then you use, you clamp this on top of what you actually would want. So like for example, I'd make a slot and then I would clamp this down. Uh, and then you use the, the template bit and you route following the template to actually make the slot. And there's a bearing on it and what it does is it actually follows the slot, the, the template to create the slot or whatever else you can do. Because you can do scrap, uh, squares, round, rectangles, so on. It's just whatever the template ends up being that you make. So, anyway, I'm going to uh, get set up and probably uh, I might show a little bit of me uh, routing out the template and then routing out the test slots um, and uh, give you a, just a, an overview and quick example of how that works. Back in a bit, or next time I get around to doing this. All right, I'm back. Um, give you a, a checkpoint where I'm at here. Um, so I made the template, um, ended up just drilling out the holes, uh, you know, like I'd start to drill here and drill here and drill the metal and whatnot. Um, and then came back and I used a chisel, uh, along with a mallet, of course, to, um, square up the edges and, uh, the way it's drilled. And I left these round. It's not really going to matter. And then I came in with a rasp and cleaned up the edges a bit. Uh, I just squared this one out a bit because, um... If I didn't, it wasn't going to be good enough. It wasn't going to be big enough. Uh, and to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, these things also work pretty well in terms of size. So, for example, this is for the big. It fits in pretty well. All uh, jokes aside, uh, same thing for this, for the smaller crescent, and then for the small last, uh, you know, so on. So the idea, of course, again, is if let's assume this is the final piece. Uh, what I'll do is, is I can go and then clamp this down bring the router in with a template bit to follow it along uh, and then there's a ball bearing and what it'll do is it'll follow along with the bit itself or the bit will follow along with the template to route out the hole. Um, I've got to do one other thing so this is for the big scissors and it works perfectly you know there's some room in there I had to uh, give it some clearance to allow it but all in all I'm not too worried about it. Um, and then these other scissors are a little more tricky because they've got this uh, 
I guess this connector, or in this case, like a nut and a bolt, which holds the two pieces of the scissors together and they'll hit. So uh, I'm gonna go and try to draw out like a clearance spot on both sides, um, a little bit bigger than this. It may not work, in which case what I may end up doing is, uh, and that's actually the wrong size, what I may end up doing is just making it big like this pair of scissors here. Uh, and if that's the case, they might flop around a little more, but probably not too much. Of course, I've got the same problem here. That's not going to work. They have to fit in. Um, and uh, so that's where I'm at. Um, I'll uh, do some more drilling here, give it a test. If it doesn't, I'll try and make a couple more slots, uh, template slots. So when I'm done with that, I'll be back and show you how that worked out and where it came out. All right, I'm back. Uh, um, kind of skipped ahead a bit. Um, so I've got this kind of rigged up a bit where I'm going to go and uh, do some routing. Uh, I've kind of zoomed in some. Um, so I've got the template on. This is still the test board that I'm working on. <clears throat> I haven't, um, haven't done anything else yet. And I'm just practicing uh, checking out to make sure that the template and the routing is going to work out fine. So I'll probably do a few of these. Uh, route out a few of the slots and do some testing to make sure everything's good and then uh, I'll start looking at doing the real board uh, Which of course that's the point of no return uh, Anyway, uh, you can watch as I route uh, Give you a second here and as I get set up and then uh, you can see I get all my safety equipment on uh, Gotta have that I, I wear hearing and mask and uh, safety glasses obviously so all right that's done uh, gonna check it out see how it came out give me a second here well it came out pretty well um, read it out the slot oh, it kind of doesn't look like much but this is what it's supposed to be um, fits in perfectly and it's quite uh, stable really like that a bunch sorry it's kind of hard to get in focus here um, pretty good it works out pretty well I'm going to do the some of the others. I'll do um, this, I think, is the big pair of scissors. And then I've got, I may do a slot here for the other pair of scissors. And then do a couple of the crescent wrenches. Anyway, uh, depending on how that goes, I'll show you how uh, where that's at. Uh, back in a bit. All right, I'm back. I have drilled all my holes. Um, varying sizes, of course, from one quarter all the way up to five eighths. And uh, everything's come out pretty well. Um, this is melamine coated particle board. Um, so melamine is a notoriously difficult uh, material to both drill and cut with clean results. And what I mean by that is uh, you can kind of tell. Well, I'll pull up a bit so you can kind of see some comparisons here. Let me focus a bit for you. There we go. So like this, for example, is a hole uh, drilled by a Forstner bit, which makes really good clean holes, and that's one drilled by a brow point. Brow points aren't bad, uh, but the uh, uh, Forstner bit really does a good job of, of getting these holes out. So and if you flip it over and look at the back side, of course, the other problem is, is blowout is a significant issue. Now, I said I don't really care. I've got good clean uh, holes in the, the center part, which is kind of what I care about as well as the entry point. And this is going to end up being covered up anyway with foam. 
Uh, so I don't, it's not really a big deal. And this isn't a showpiece or anything. So, but it's just something that, that you keep in mind when you're working with this material. So after this, the next thing I need to do is cut my slots along here for uh, the um, wrenches and scissors. So I'm gonna go and do that. And then when I'm done with that, I'll come back and show you the results. All right, back. I have uh, cut the slots. Had to um, adjust what I was doing before uh, because if I was trying to, uh, if you recall, I was going to try to put all my scissors and crescent wrenches in a row along here and angle them kind of like this, except do that all along here and have a nice row. Well, looking at it, I realized it was just because I want to. It wasn't going to work out too well because. Uh, I'm going to have screwdrivers here with their handles, so uh, I don't have one handy to show you real quick. It's I'd have to walk over and get it. I don't really care to. Um, so I, I decided to, since I had this room in the back, uh, I had the scissors here and I had the crescent wrenches there. Um, I also had a couple of issues routing out my slots. This one came out fine. That came out fine. This is kind of okay, and that's kind of... Uh, um, Routing's always, routing is always a precarious operation, and this template is pretty low quality, quite frankly, but it's good enough uh, for what I needed. Um, and then uh, I also wasn't pleased with the slot for the scissors for this, what I had uh, done, didn't like how it sat, so I'm going to do it this way. This might not work out, though, because as you can tell, that's pretty high up, so I might end up still doing the other way. And all the only major differences as I have is is I have to just cut a slot out for this and then it'll go up a ways um, and I might end up still doing that because if this sits too high and it's the uh, top of the space that I'm going to put in then uh, I'll have to do something about that but uh, next step is to uh, put the sides and the base on and then it'll be done and then I can put everything in and then see how it fits in my space I think everything will be pretty good um, I did notice, like for example, this uh, fits in quite well. I really like how that sits. Uh, let's see, this crescent wrench, the big one, does a great job. It sits in nice. Um, and don't forget, I'm going to put foam on the bottom of this, so and make little slots and holes for uh, the, the uh, screwdrivers as well as the scissors and wrenches. So anyway, I'm going to start working on that. Uh, figure out I have some ideas on what I'm going to do. Probably have a piece here and a piece here piece here and a piece here and then maybe a back piece. I don't have too much room. I can't really uh, go too far so I'd kind of watch that. I was kind of concerned about clearance um, and I hope to leave more space but this is how it ended up at and I'm not really too concerned about it and if, if it really does end up working I'll just get another piece of scrap that's wider and do it again. I mean it's not like it's really hard. The hard part was really was laying it out and figuring things out honestly because after that it's just drill 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 and so forth and in fact I could use this as a guide to drill redrill the holes the only an ir in irritating part would be doing the slots for the scissors and wrenches anyway so when I'm done with that I'll show you where I'm at all right everyone I'm back cut the pieces for the bottom and the side supports uh, let's see get you in fo shot here at least it won't be in focus too well gonna be something like this and then I'm gonna have uh, let's see one over here can't get y'all in frame uh, and then one here and then um, I'll have the top sitting on top like so and uh, this will uh, support the stuff and I'm also gonna have a lateral stop at the back the lateral support um, and uh, I'm gonna have a little bit of overhang in the front so like I can grab my hand here and have some room uh, that'll work out pretty well um, I'm going to use uh, dominoes if you know what those are festival makes a tool called a dominoes basically a floating more uh, floating tenon uh, tool similar to a plate joiner or like a dowel machine um, they came out with it a number of years ago I picked it up on their introductory price and yeah we're not going to talk about the cost of that um, and it's just gone even so much higher than what it used to be anyway they're, it's a great machine. The dominoes are uh, pretty cool, uh, and I'll show you what I do with some of that here in a bit when I get set up for that work. And I'll show you that in a moment. All right, I'm gonna 
Uh, now I'm set up, I'm going to start cutting. These are the uh, pieces that are going to sit, um, you know, like this. Kind of like the supports. I don't have the bottom here. It's over on my, ben on my, uh, on my bench. Um, but I'm going to put dominoes, uh, cut the mortises for the dominoes here and on the other end as well. Um, and I'm going to do all these pieces. I have a bunch of them. So I'll show you one real quick. Uh, if you don't want to know what a domino is, you can look up a festival domino and see. Um, it's basically floating tenon is what I said before. I'll show you one real quick. It's very, um, it's very similar to what people think of as a, uh, um, like a biscuit joint or something, except it's a little different. And uh, you have like, if you can see it, you'll drill a socket on the end, um, you know, the, the mortise for the, this, which is the floating tenon, and they call them dominoes. And uh, the other piece, in this case, the top or the bottom will sit, and then it's like this, and then I'm gonna put another one on this side. It's a very strong joint. Um, and, uh, you know, it's pretty neat. Um, so I'll cut one real quick and show you what that's like. Oh, uh, it's gonna be really loud because I'm gonna have the vacuum and, of course, the domino machine itself is, is quite loud. See, hopefully I'll let me try to get you focused in so you can see what this looks like. Uh, you can see the well the light's pretty bad, but you can see there's these are the two uh, mortises for the tenons. And they go in, put glue on it, and then you glue it in and stick it in. I'm not gonna do it now because they have a pretty precise fit and they'll get stuck pretty easily, and then I have to use pliers to pull them out. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'll continue to do all these and then um, I'll probably do the bottom and then when I get all this done, I'll uh, show you what I what it's like right before it glue up. All right, I have uh, cut all my sockets, uh, mortises for all the dominoes and uh, my dominoes. So I'm gonna glue up and assemble and uh, when I'm done with that, I'll be back and it should be done at that point. I'll be back in a bit after that's over. And bottom, all the supports are on, on the glued into the bottom. I'm going to start putting in the top.
one of the most challenging parts of working with dominoes though is the glue up and uh, can be kind of stressful and all that anyway so got it all glued up clamped so on uh, I'll let the glue dry take it open or take the clamps off and uh, check it out when that's done uh, I'll show you where it's at all right glue's dried um, took the clamps off and uh, this it's all nice and glued together pretty solid pretty happy with it I've got a couple of more things I'm going to do. Um, one of the things I mentioned, of course, is um, I'm going to put some foam in the bottom. Uh, <clears throat> and then um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sand um, some of these edges uh, since they're kind of sharp and, you know, I don't really have to get too much. I'm going to run some sandpaper around and make them a little smooth. So just in case I hit myself, I'm not really going to hit it because these are still a little sharp. They're right off the, the blade, so to speak. Uh, apart from that, uh, when I'm done, I'll uh, uh, done with those two things. I'll show you, um, give you a couple of uh, an update on it, so you can see what it looks like at the end here when it's finished. Oh, one other thing I'm going to do. I think I'm going to chamfer these holes, um, give them a little, uh, just a little bit of relief, so that when things come in, you're not hitting the sharp edge, potentially chipping it. Anyway, uh, when I have all those things done, I'll uh, come back and wrap it up. Back in a moment. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and chamfer these, show you a couple of these real quick, and then I'll finish them off. I might do this a little faster. I don't really have to do a lot. Just a little bit. And that's it. Pretty easy. Not a difficult thing to do. Just sand some edges here. Just knock off the sharp edges. Nothing really a big deal. I'll finish it off and we'll be back in a second. All right, well, I uh, have sanded, did the chamfering. Um, last thing, I'm gonna put this in and then uh, glue it on the bottom. Well, the bottom of the top, right? So here's the top. And then, you know, the screwdrivers and whatnot are gonna go through and it's gonna sit here. And then I'm gonna cut little holes uh, or little cuts, slits, if you will, that'll allow the uh, screwdriver blades to go through and this will help kind of hold them in place and make it a little more stable. Uh, so I'm going to put it on here. Uh, one thing I could have done was I could have actually put this in uh, beforehand and then drilled. But uh, I think it probably would have been kind of tricky with doing all the joiner and everything else. So um, I decided to wait till after. Um, I'm just going to go and smear some uh, clear silicone glue um, with the, this kind of scrap piece of plastic I've got just to get it like a nice film on it and then put it in place. So uh, once that's all dry, uh, I'll show you what I'm gonna do when I cut the holes uh, and I'll show you that. All right, so kind of squish the glue around, kind of spread the glue around, squished it around the gaps and stuff. And I've stuck this in, I'm gonna take a roller. Now this is a roller you can pick up. Um, this is a speed ball from a company, uh, Statesville. 
Um, it's uh, you can pick them up at office supply stores. Uh, it's pretty handy for putting glue. This is kind of a real soft uh, rubber um, roller, which is kind of handy. And uh, you, um, if you get glue on it, you can just uh, if, well. If you use like say Type Bond two or three or something like that, just your standard wood glue, you can use um, uh, hot water and you can peel it off after it dries. It's really nice. Of course, you can always scrub it and wash it beforehand with soap, so it's pretty handy. But uh, you know, it's also handy because you can use it to uh, press things down like this. So it's it's a really nice little thing to have. You know, I mean, I think it's like ten bucks something like that. It's a pretty handy little thing to have. Um, Saw a tip on this somewhere years ago, and I've had this for a while. Uh, anyway, so I've done this, and we'll let it dry, and then I'll poke my holes, and I'll show you that, and then we'll take a final uh, roll through with it. All right, this is glued in pretty well next day. It's quite solid. So all you do for cutting these in is uh, I just go and I put Zacto knife, and then just do a cut and then do a cut the other way, and so on. And that's what I've tried before, it worked pretty well. Uh, probably may have to tune it a bit, and these little ones are a little tougher, so I may have to come in from the bottom of those. Uh, I'm gonna do all those, and then uh, I'm gonna fill it up, and that'll be it. All right, cut all the uh, little slots and stuff. One thing I did do for the ones that uh, may have been too small for the knife, I ended up trying to use this, I used this uh, all to poke through. Works out pretty well. Uh, so now I'm going to load it up. And uh, so we'll see how this thing works. After all this effort. And any of that I think that I find that are too tight, I'll probably cut them out or maybe cut the, the slots a little bigger or whatnot. So it's something to just experiment with. but. It's holding them in there pretty stiff right now. I can feel it. Like, it comes out pretty well. That's ah, probably fine. Probably wear out a little bit with time, get a little looser, but that's okay. Let's see. Now I get to figure out where everything goes. But I think it'll help because it really, I can feel it kind of gripping these and they're not flopping around too much. So, from that regard, I think it's working pretty well. when I put these in the right holes. That's it. All done. I think this looks pretty freaking good, honestly. Uh, I will say one thing that's kind of interesting is, you know, the older style, uh, you know, screwdrivers, they don't have marks. All the marks are really small on the side, like, you know, this is a Torx T10. Uh, so it's kind of difficult to see from above. This is where uh, in the more modern style pattern of uh, drivers, like this Vera, for example, uh, this PZ1, uh, positive drive you can see from the top so that's a that's a plus for the more modern stuff versus say this older style that doesn't have the uh, um, it, it isn't marked in a very visible manner so uh, from that regard it's not you know this is it's a plus for these newer ones anyway um, I like this a lot this is pretty cool 
pretty happy with this. I think I don't have any problems pulling anything out. And it's pretty solid. I mean, these smaller ones are always going to rattle some, but I can still feel they're held in pretty well by the foam I have. So, uh, <clears throat> the other thing, of course, it's going to fit in. And actually, let me uh, put that in place and show you where it's going to go. Uh, I'll have to rearrange the camera, though. I'll be right back. So this is basically where it ends up at. Um, kind of a cabinet thing. I've got shelves and stuff where I store things. Um, pretty happy with it. Fits in really well. I like this too. I can grab it very easily and pull it out to grab whatever I need. Normally I'll be just grabbing the scissors and the, the front drivers because that's usually most of the time what I use. Uh, but if I need to pull out and grab these or the scissors or whatever, I can do it. Of course the other thing is I can pick it up pretty easily too and carry it if I want to put it on my bench. Like I said, I don't normally use these that much in the shop here, but uh, when I do, I'll have this pretty handy. So I'm pretty happy with it. A um, few comments. Uh, this is, as one would say, a pretty decent amount of effort, maybe more than what some people would want. And you can always buy your own or, and this is something that I'm using. I just have very specific requirements, so I decided to do this. Um, so this may not be an approach. And, and one other thing is, of course, I use dominoes, but you could just use, easily use a biscuit biscuits or glue and screws there's no particular reason i just picked those because i like them and i have one uh domino machine so that regard it's there's nothing preventing anybody else from making this or something similar uh, and i mean i just made it a scrap wood so it's not like it's some huge expense that's uh, more about the effort of planning and then putting it together uh the next thing i've got to do which i'm not going to put this as in this video is to do the plier storage um let me rearrange. I'll give you a rough idea what I've got to try to do. This is the space I'm going to try to fit it in. I'm thinking I may not be able to do it. Um, may have to come up with another spot, and we'll see how that goes. Anyway, hang on a second. Let me swap around so I can give a rough idea of what I've got to store. As I was saying, this is kind of what I have to try to store in that space. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that. Um, I'm going to look at this, and then there's some other spaces I can try. Um, but kind of a rough idea of what I've got for the next part. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it's a fun project for me at least. It's something a little different to do something like that. Uh, and anyway, if you know, uh, like more, you can like it. Give me some comments, subscribe, so forth. And thanks for watching.